These are the last notes for chapter 10. We're talking about using T procedures wisely. The first part says, should you use two sample T procedures with paired data? We're going to be comparing these two things throughout the notes. Paired data typically goes with data from a matched pairs experiment. So how do I know which one to use and when to use it? Um, well, for starters, the two-sample t-test or two-sample t-interval, you use that when the data has no specific order or organization. So if it's just one big group of data for the first group and then one big group of data for the second group, the data doesn't have any respect to each other, no organization or specific order. So the two groups, the way they're organized, would be completely independent. But if you'll remember from last chapter, when we did paired data, we did a one sample t test or interval for mu sub d. So the capital D in the subscript there, that stood for the true mean difference. So when do you use that match pairs thing? Right? We do a one sample t test for just the differences among the pairs. Well, we can say when the data is organized or ordered in such a way that each list depends on the other list. So if somebody came up and scrambled your lists, right, then the data all of a sudden wouldn't make sense anymore. So we wouldn't want to mess with the order of each list. So that's really the giveaway right there. Am I supposed to use a match pairs or a two sample? Well, if the data is organized so that the first list and the second list sort of depend on each other, and you really wouldn't want someone to come up and mess up the order of those lists, then that's when you choose match pairs. So our example, which is about testing with distractions, says suppose you're designing an experiment to determine if students perform better on tests when there are no distractions, such as a teacher talking on the phone. You have access to two classrooms and 30 volunteers who are willing to participate in your experiment. Part A says design an experiment so the two sample t test would be the appropriate inference method. Just remember that a two sample t test, that's the one that the order within the groups doesn't matter. So that would be the one where we just do mu1 minus mu2. That's why we have two samples. Okay, so the most basic way to design this experiment then would be to split up these 30 volunteers randomly into the, the two treatment groups. So we could say, randomly assign 15 subjects to the distraction room and 15 to the non-distraction room. So randomly assign half the subjects to each treatment. And then of course you've got to administer the test, right? Same test to both groups. And at the end, you compare the mean scores from each group, whether they were in the, in the distraction group or the control group, which didn't have any distractions. And when we say compare the mean scores from each group, that would be mu1 minus mu2. So that's the two sample T procedure. Okay, so the next part, Part B, is actually probably a little bit better in terms of design. So Part B says design an experiment so that a paired t-test would be the appropriate inference method. So what would be the other way that we could go about designing this experiment so that we could use a paired t-test? Well, what if we gave each subject the treatments, both treatments, in a random order? Right, so why don't we start out with giving each of the 30 subjects both treatments in a random order. The random order part is actually pretty important because we eliminate some possible confounding there. So each of the 30 subjects, if I could make a little table design here, so we have subject one, subject two, whatever their distracted score is, whatever their non-distracted score is, so you can start to see 
that the data actually makes sense because it's organized this way. So after we give each subject both treatments randomly, we calculate the difference in scores for each subject. So the difference for subject 1, we'd write that here. Difference for subject 2, we'd write that here. And once we have the difference for each one of the 30 subjects, we're going to find the mean difference from those 30 numbers. So when a paired t-test, we're not subtracting two means, right? We're not doing the mean of this group minus the mean of this group. We're actually a little bit more specific. We're going to find the mean difference from each pair. So that way it's really only a one sample t-test, and our one sample that we use would be just this group right here, all the differences. So our mean difference, mu sub d, and when we get that mean difference, we compare it to zero. Like, how close is it to zero? Because if our mean difference is really close to zero, well, that could mean that there's really no difference between the distracted score and the non-distracted score for this test. So the last part here asks, which of these two designs is better and why? Well, part B is actually a little bit better because it eliminates a possible source of variability. All right, and the variability comes from random assignment. Like in part A, if you see a big difference between the distracted score and the non-distracted score, it could just be that you randomly assigned uh, all the really smart people to one group. So part B would eliminate that, right? If we, if we ran it this way for the match pairs test, we eliminate individual IQ as being a factor. So that means part B, since it's improved, actually increases the power of the test, meaning if there is a difference between the distracted test and the non-distracted test, the better design in part B is more likely to detect that difference. Okay, so these are the last notes for chapter 10. We talked about when to use two sample T procedures, when to use one sample or match pairs procedures. So that is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.